So <laughs> it's a very funny story. So when I came to the Philippines, I believe it was 2016, uh, all I knew in English was the verb to be, like you are, <laughs> things like that. And I remember the first time I went to school, I didn't... You were confused. Yes, I was confused. Oh my God. And I was wondering, what, what language is that? I, had, I don't understand anything, but I can tell that it's not English at all. <laughs> of course, with the help of my... Welcome back again to another video. In today's video, as you can see, we have a beautiful guest on our channel. I'll just allow her to introduce herself to our viewers. Hello, everyone. My name is Augusta Maria Enriquez. I am from Angola and I am international student here in the Philippines. Welcome to Nostrut Nook. For, for those of you that may be wondering where um, Angola is, Angola is a country in Southern Africa. So she's an african girl just like me nigeria is in western part of africa but angola is in southern part of africa so um augusta how do you pronounce your name augusta augusta yes. and the same spelling in nigeria the spelling of your name is pronounced as augusta okay but that's why you see most times I call you Augusta, Augusta, because that's the spelling and that's how we pronounce it in Nigeria. So Agusta, Agusta, yeah. right? Yes, yes. Agusta, Augusta. Welcome to Nursery Nook. So, Augusta, uh, you said you are a student, international student here in the Philippines. Do you mind sharing with us or do you mind telling my viewers the course you are taking up here in the Philippines? Okay, uh, right now I'm taking dentistry. I am on my third year of college. <laughs> so you are taking up dentistry. So dentistry is six years course, right? Yes. So three years from now, you'll be a dentist already. For sure. <laughs> from the Philippines, graduate from the Philippines. Let's talk about schooling in the Philippines. The certificates from the Philippines, is it recognized in Angola? Yes, uh, I believe it is because uh, there is a lot of Angolan people studying here in the Philippines and when they finish their study, they go back home and they get a job right away. Especially those people who are, who are taking like medical, medical courses. Ah, so you mean to say even though you study nursing, of course I'm a nurse, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to market my profession. So even though you are a nurse, you are a medical doctor, it's not difficult for one to get a job. If you finish from the Philippines, you go back to Angola, you get the job one time or you need to do extra things before you get the job. No, uh, from experience, uh those people started here in the Philippines. After they graduated, they went home and then it took them like two to three months to get a job. So I think it's pretty easy if you have a diploma studying abroad, anywhere, doesn't matter if it's Philippine, Brazil, or as long as it's not in your country, you know. <laughs> so you yeah. mean to say certificate from outside the country, outside Angola as a country is more recognized compared to within Angola? Yes, that's true. So they give you a lot of respect and honor if you study abroad? Yes, yes. So Philippines is abroad, of course, right? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so do you need to take a um, licensure exam or after your dentistry, you go back to Angola, for example, if that's what you want, and you just apply for a job, you get it with a license exam? Oh, it depends. If you want to work like in the government, there is like an uh, exam. You don't need to take exam to be licensed as an, a licensed dentist. I think in my country, you have like to have a, an exam to be able to work in the government. But for private sectors, I don't, I don't think it's needed. Yes. Wow. That's good. Let's come back to studying in the Philippines. How has it been taking up dentistry here in the Philippines? Well, uh, dentistry is a beautiful course, of course, but I, I am uh, I am right now on my third year. So the third year is as if you are in your first year of dental school. Yeah, in the third year, it's like you are on your first year of dental school because the first and second year is like 
preparation, just like basic subject like general anatomy, microbiology, that is not a major subject, but on your third year, all the subjects, they are major. It has to do with your, with your course. Yes. Oh. Every subject will deal with your future career. Oh, I get it now. Setting up um, dentistry in the Philippines, in terms of language, in Angola, do you speak English? In Angola, we do speak Portuguese because we are colonized by the Portuguese. So coming to the Philippines, how were you able to cope speaking Portuguese, understanding Tagalog, then now you can talk in English? How? So, <laughs> it's a very funny story. So when I came to the Philippines, I believe it was 2016, uh, all I knew in English was the verb to be like you are, <laughs> things like that. And I remember the first time I went to school, I didn't I didn't understood anything the teacher was saying. Are you serious? Yes, and they were speaking, not in English, they were speaking Tagalog and they was confused. You were confused? Yes, I was confused. Oh my God. And I was wondering what, what language is that? I, had, I don't understand anything, but I can tell that it's not English at yeah. all. <laughs> of course, with the help of my two brothers and my high school friends, and listen to a lot of music, uh, watching series and movie, I was able to learn new words every single day. And that's how I learned my English until now. Oh, really? So yes. coming to the Philippines, you talk in Portuguese then, so you learned your English from movie, listening to music, series, okay. and listen to the people conversation. Like the environment helped me because most of my classmates, they tried to speak with me in English. So then I was learning new things every single day. Your classmates, are they other foreigners or Filipinos? Oh, they were Filipinos. So of course, when they talk to me, they try their best to speak in English. But when they talk with your friend, they usually speak in Tagalog, so yeah. So you're able to pick one or two from them as well? Yes, I was able to learn new words every single day. Wow. You mentioned um, when you were in high school. Do you mean to say high school in Angola or high school in the Philippines? Oh, uh, when I came here, I was like 16 years old, so I did my high school here in the Philippines. <laughs> wow. So how were you able to cope? Uh, to be honest, that time, the school where I was studying, I had many Angolan friends, people from my country, so it was easy. I didn't feel like alone at all because I had help of my, my brothers and my countrymen. You mean to say Angolans, they come to the Philippines a lot? Uh, I can say no, but <laughs> because comparing to Nigerian, I think you guys are, you are, we are more, you are, yes, you are more than us. So we are just mean? like 100 Angolans here in the Philippines. Wow. You said you came to the Philippines at the age of 16. So how did you know who told you about the Philippines for you to have come at that young, very young age? And you mentioned that um, you did your high school here in the Philippines. Yes. So who told you about the Philippines? Oh, before I came to the Philippines, my brother, my older brother was already here. So he invited me to come and study to the Philippines. Of course, I got excited because it would be my, my first time traveling abroad. So mm. that's how I knew about the Philippines. So you came to the Philippines with the help of your brother. Mm -hmm. Where is your brother now? Oh, my brother, they are working in Manila right now. They are working in Manila? Yes, yes. With yes. student visa? I'm curious. I really want to know about this because I know that as a foreigner, <laughs> you are not allowed to work with student visa. So they are working here with student visa no, or what? No, they are working with the uh, worker visa. Uh, my brother actually already finished his study, his master and uh, PhD. So even if you are doing your master or PhD, you can also get like a working visa. You can study master with working visa. That's what he did. 
Yes. Oh, so right now they have their working visa. Yes, yes. Wow, that's good to know. So um, back to the question, can you share with my viewers your high school, during the days of your high school here in the Philippines, did you encounter challenges? During my high school day, uh, during my first and second, third month, of course it was difficult because I didn't know the language. It was like new environment. The way they teach, the way they they say thing everything was new to me so it was hard but of course i made friends and when you make friends everything gets easier so they when i don't understand anything i have like i just got my friend and ask so they helped me of course my friend helped me to cope with everything filipinos or your fellow angolans i was the only foreigner in my classroom so my filipino friends i really made filipino friends in high school was there any kind of discrimination racism among them then uh, to be honest i never experienced any racism during my high school day of course i felt like i was different because i was the only block in my classroom and I feel like they were curious about me, about my country, about my color, my hair, how I dress, how I speak. But I never felt like they were discriminate me. It's more like curiosity. Curiosity. <laughs> curiosity. Oh, yes. that's good to know. So you really enjoyed your high school days here in the Philippines among the Filipinos, the Filipinas as your classmates. Oh yes, my high school day was the best years of my life here in the Philippines. Are you serious? Yes. I enjoyed a lot. I made a lot of friends. I got invited to many, many friends' houses as I was their family or anything like that. So it was very good time. Very Do you good. wish to go back? <laughs> yes, I wish because college is so depressing. No one, no one cares. Nobody cares. So. Really? Can you share more with us? Do you experience um, like discrimination now in your college um, level? No, but it's just different. It's not the same. In high school, it's more fun. In college, nobody really cares. Everybody just want to get good grades and finish class and go back home. Nobody mm -hmm. is there to really make like a good friendship or anything like that. So it's depressing a little bit. It's like you don't have a social life as you, you used to have in high school days. Will I be right to say that um, it's because the college level, the course you are taking up is more demanding mm -hmm. in terms of um, your time? Like it needs you to read, be serious with it. It has taken away your social life or something. Can you explain, please? Oh, uh, I believe it's not the reason at all. I believe there is time for everything. I think it just people really don't want to make friends in college. I think I don't know, but I just feel like we go to school, we have class, we talk a little bit with our classmate, and then we go home. That's like a routine. That's how it is. It's like a competition to be the best student in the class. So everybody wants to be at the top. I feel what you are talking about because when I was in school, yeah, everybody, like, you want to be the best, one of the best, if not the best, or be among the best students. So, and uh, maybe people may not really want to, like, put you through in what you don't know because everybody is struggling to be the best. But do you find it difficult relating with your classmates and your instructors? No, I don't. Uh, I usually understand every single thing my teacher says, either if it's in Tagalog or English, because uh, I do understand more Tagalog than speak. So I don't really have a problem with communication, at least right now in college, I don't. Oh, talking about Tagalog, you did your high school here, so can you speak Tagalog? If I say I do speak Tagalog, I would be lying, <laughs> but I do understand more Tagalog than speaking. I do understand, but speaking Tagalog is difficult for me. I understand more than speaking. Even after spending your high school days here in the Philippines, college days, you still can't speak Tagalog? Yes, because after my high school days, my high school friends just left and you forget most of the things that you learn of course you understand but speaking you it requires you a lot of practice i had no one to practice with because uh, all my friends from high school just left you know they're busy with something else and then the little tagalog that i knew 
I started to forget it, you know. But oh. I do, I do understand more Tagalog oh. than speaking. Oh. Yes. So, can you just tell us basic Tagalog? Like, don't you remember or can't you speak basic Tagalog? Kumusta ka na? Oh, I can say kumusta ka na, <laughs> which means how are you? Oh, maganda umagan. Mm. Good morning. Uh, oh, maganda. Beautiful. Things like that. Like That's the word I love so much. <laughs> But the one I love super, super, super much is, guess, do you know it? <laughs> wow, diba? No. Uh, I don't know, beautiful, maganda. Pera. <laughs> Walang pera. <laughs> Walang pera. <laughs> I like using that word. You know, most what of the um, try school men, when they see you, they think you are a million dollar worth, you know, Very because true. you are a foreigner, foreigner. Mm -hmm. or some of these locals when they see you they think oh, you are a foreigner that means you are rich you are rich mm -hmm. so once you tell me you are rich you are rich i'm a student <laughs> so i tell them easily walam pera <laughs> <laughs> i love pera because it has to do with money mm -hmm. so once i hear walam pera i know you are saying no money then it is meron pera yes there is money i'll just reduce this slightly you know? These dog, give them milk, mother. I don't understand. The Tagalog word I love anytime, any day is para. That's money. And every other one. Um, the other one is um, Mahakita. Mahalkita. Mahalkita. <laughs> Mahalkita. What's the meaning of Mahakita? I love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Mahakita. I love that word too. I love the sentence. So back to the question. All right. I love asking this question. Can you tell us your truth? What you love about the Philippines? Well, uh, what I love about living in the Philippines is that it's a tropical country, the same as mine. It has beautiful beaches, like there is a lot of places for tourism you can explore, like Cebu, Palawan, you know, Boracay, Boracay, and so Hundred Islands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is many, many places to explore. Yeah, that's what I really love, love about the Philippines. Even the food, there is some food that I really like. So, yeah, like, oh, like uh, chicken adobo mm. or calderata. Uh, mm. Sinigan. Woo! You love Senegan. I yes. love Senegan. I like Senegan. Um Senegan bang bang with bangus. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Me too. You love it? Oh. Wow, I love it. It's very nice. That's one simplest Filipino meal I've ever tasted and it tastes so nice. Mm -hmm. And you can prepare this in less than thirty minutes. Tell us your truth. What you don't like about the Philippines. Uh, to be honest, what I don't like about the Philippines is that people can be very annoying in the street. <laughs> really? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I would say that Philippines is a beautiful country <laughs> and it can also be a little bit annoyed when you go in the street, you know? People, people can be annoying just I don't know. I don't know. I just say that the, especially the tricycle drivers, you know, they can be very annoying. You are walking, going to school, they're going to ask you, tricycle, you say no, and then they keep following you, tricycle, 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 tricycle. But I said no, and then you get so angry, like, no, he said, tricycle. Oh, I get so annoying. Very annoying. And there is also people that don't know how to stare. Of course, I understand that you are curious about me. I'm beautiful, I'm black, I'm foreigner here in the Philippines. But please, don't stare like I did something wrong or something's wrong with me. It's make me like uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. That's what I hate the most. When people stare, with, uh, when people stare at me without like... Yeah, I really hate when also people stare at, at you and they don't even blink their eye, you see? They stare, they stare and you feel so uncomfortable, like something's wrong with you, but no, you are perfect, fine and beautiful, but they still like, like this, you see? But of course, oh I understand God. they are curious, but it's too much, can be very uncomfortable. Of course, I understand. <laughs> She's a comedian, oh my god. Sorry. 
<laughs> I couldn't control the laughter, you know, I couldn't control it. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Augusta. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm trying to put my top here. Yeah, yeah, tell your truth. I want it to be sincere, like in all honesty. So this is what you don't like about the Filipinos or about the about living in the Philippines. Yes, and also I can tell that people are gonna hate me for that, but Filipino can be very fake, you know. I can say that Filipinos are friendly. They say they are the most friendly people in Asia. Of course they are, but they can be very fake as well, you know? Yes. They're gonna pretend that they care about you, but in the next five seconds, they're gonna pass through you like they don't know you. Like, it's very amazing to me in my <laughs> culture. If you talk to me like today, in the next day, you, at least you yeah. can say good morning. You don't pass through me without saying anything. I don't know if it's like a cultural thing, but it's very wrong in my culture. At Whoa. least you have to say good morning. It's not just in college. It's since high school, everywhere. Like I used to live in another city and I moved here in the new city that I'm doing my college, but it's still the same. They talk to you today like, how are you? Good morning, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. But in the next day, Oh, no good morning, not nothing. Oh, and really? you feel so, um, how would I put it? You feel like it's something they fake or something? I mean, I don't know, maybe it's a cultural thing, but I feel uncomfortable. If you mm. will never talk to me again and don't make me feel like important or like you are my friend. They make oh. you feel like they are your friend, but in the next day they will not even say good morning at all. They will pass through you like you're not there <laughs> <laughs> oh that's why you say it looks like um it's something it's something that looks fake because this minute you are my friend the next minute if i see you you want to talk to them yeah. and the person is acting like he or she has never met you yeah it's oh my but God. no it's not everybody is like yeah. that there is i have very good friends but most of the time this happens it's if you interview another foreigner in my classroom or anywhere or my brothers my fellow angolans they will tell you i don't know if you felt that but i felt that i did my high school here and it's happened all the time yeah yeah that's what i don't like about some filipinos they can really fake things oh mm -hmm. This is her personal experience. Yes, guys, personal. please don't hate me in the comments. I'm just trying to be honest. Yeah, and because I asked you your truth about the Philippines. So she's trying to be honest in this her conversation. And the way she's saying it, this I'm going to put it out because I want her to be honest with the interview. You know, my interview videos most of the time is how they say it that I put it out. So it's all about being honest, sharing your truth about your experience here in the philippines so basically you stayed in the philippines for how many years now it's been seven years now oh seven years so this is her own truth about living in the philippines for seven years now so how do you feel do you feel like what you said this means you think you already made a good friend then the next day it's like the person is acting like i don't know you how do you feel each time you come across um someone that acts that way how do you feel uh to be honest nowadays i don't care because i know that they're gonna talk to me right now and then in the next morning they will pretend they don't exist at all so i don't take it to my heart at all because from experience it is it is not the first time i know it will happen it's part of them so i don't take it to heart anymore i just feel very uncomfortable with this kind of behavior because in your place is not like that i think every african country is like that yeah at it's... least you say good morning even if she's not your friend yes, your neighbor or just good morning what you are saying is true that's it happens to me every foreigner Except if you are from a country that is used to that kind of, will I say, attitude mm -hmm. or behavior. But back there in Africa, she's an Angolan, I'm a Nigerian. 
if we already started friendship today except if we had a quarrel before we parted with yes. something like that but if we start a friendship today i cannot just see you tomorrow and pretend like i don't, I don't know yes. you so that's what she's trying to say and that's how it is in most african country if we already start building our friendship you have to continue building yeah. our relationship <laughs> let's not pretend we don't know each other please yeah that's what i'm trying to say all right thank you so much augusta like i said do not take this interview so personal these are experience after living seven years here in the philippines and of course like she said it's not the same with every filipino or filipina yeah that's correct not all the filipinos behave this way since i made a lot of friends in high school and we kept our friendship of course and i really made like a filipino family through my high school day so not all and you are still in contact with them up until now? Yes, we still in contact with I still in contact with them, you know. I I can visit and time when I have free time. So you already have family here in the Philippines? Yes, I uh, kind of. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Moving on, were you ever faced with challenge here in the Philippines? Oh challenge. I can say in my high school day because everything was new. Mm. Yes, it was challenging but after I graduated high school, nothing is new because I already passed through the process of knowing things and adjust with the environment. Now I am adjusted since I've been here from 2016 to 2023. So it's been a long way, long process learning and adjusting. I know when you came, you were very young. so. What was your first impression about the Philippines? <laughs> My first impression was that the Philippines is very hot. The weather is very warm. And uh, yeah, very warm. That's it. Nothing new at all. Just the weather. Of course, in my country, the weather is tropical, but I felt like it was too much in the Philippines. The weather, yeah, was something different. Okay. Don't come for Augusta. Please don't come for me. <laughs> don't come for me. Yeah, please, please. It is our experience. It is our life here in the Philippines after seven years. Mm -hmm. So I think um, she has every right to share her experience and she's entitled to her opinion of everything she shared on this video. Mm -hmm. Right. So please do not come for Augusta. Drop nice comments for her in the comment section. Definitely should be going through your comments on the comment section and um, Can you say speak that um, Portuguese. Okay. Se você é nova aqui nesse canal, por favor, não esquece de like, comenta e deixa o que você mais gostou sobre mim. Ela é uma boa pessoa e beijo. What did you just say? I said subscribe, comment down below what you like about this interview and share with your friends and uh, subscribe <laughs> yeah thank you so much and um until i come your way again or we come your way again next time together with augusta we say bye, bye.